Well, uh, Christopher Lee is a very special person in every way. Um, he's enormously erudite. He speaks at least seven languages. I was once in a restaurant. There was a, a waitress who uh, was very attentive to him. And so he spoke to her. And then he realized she was Lithuanian, and he spoke to her in Lithuanian. I was very impressed. I mean, he has this incredible capacity for languages and for picking them up quickly. And as a result, if you go through his immense list of films, you'll find a lot of them are foreign films from quite unexpected places. And the most extraordinary thing he did was he played Jinnah, the, the, the father of Pakistan, you know. And uh, A, he looked just right. I mean, that was, that was um, he was very well made up for that. Um, but also he got I, I think probably, although I never met Jinnah, um, his mannerisms and everything perfectly. And the Pakistanis were pretty, pretty, um, how can I say, um, uh, apt to be offended uh, if, if Jinnah is not properly treated. He is the you know, icon, like Ataturk is to the Turks. Um, they were very happy with it. Um, and I mean, that shows that sort of, breadth of his of his um, his oeuvre as it were he also um, small performances like he played Mycroft Holmes in a Billy Wilder Sherlock Holmes film and he was just right he would have been even better in the Holmes role actually um, that was a little mistake the producer made there I thought but in a way he 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 has been, I think, almost everybody's favorite um, character actor. But in a way, you think that because he's got a, such a very specific face and a very specific height and a very specific voice, he would have been limited in that area. So I think a lot of parts, small parts and big parts, must have been written for him. Certainly the part in The Wicker Man of Lord Samuel was written for him. I mean, there would have been that role, but how he talked and that sort of slightly um, uh, prophetic uh, air which he had in everything he said, as if he, as if he was a sort of latter-day prophet, which in a way, of course, the role was, um, uh, sort of something which I think he could uniquely do. There are actors, in my opinion, and Christopher is one of them, who when they are on the screen with another actor, who may be an even better actor, uh, and uh, as, at least as good as, you can't look at the other actor, you have to look at Christopher. That's being a film star. Michael Caine, once uh, said that of himself uh, in The Man Who Will Be King, uh, where he played with um, famous Scottish actor, um, Sean Connery. Where he played with Sean Connery, uh, um, and he said, uh, Sean Connery is a star, and uh, you'll always look at him when he's on screen and I'm on screen. I'm a very good film actor. And that, that is probably true of Michael Caine. Um, and I think it's a distinction that when you're casting, you have to make. There can be people, people who are not the most brilliant interpreters of roles, uh, good actors, but not that extraordinary. You can nevertheless dominate a scene simply because they have a kind of what the Polynesians call manner. There's a sort of effulgence uh, from them that commands the audience to look and listen. And he has that. Um, uh, I don't, I mean, there are roles I wouldn't ask Christopher to play because I think he would be pushed. Uh, well, I would never say that to him. I am saying that to him now, I suppose. But <laughs> I could hear his voice down the telephone. Hardy, <laughs> what 
always starts saying that. Hardy, why haven't you called me? You know, uh, and it's because we're waiting for some decision on, on the film. This has been the new film. Um, and uh, anyway, he's a lot of fun to work with. <laughs>